Hello, folks, and welcome to my lightning talk on creating an interactive OER for a non-majors chemistry course. My name is Dr. Erin Abram, and I'm an assistant college lecturer at Cleveland State University in the Department of Chemistry. I began teaching CHM 151, Chemistry Around Us, this past fall. This is a core curriculum course for students who are not majoring in STEM fields. Each semester, we offer one section of this course with about 55 students enrolled. The students in this course are highly diverse. Uh, up to about 25% of them, English is a second language. Now, under our previous instructor, the course required a textbook that was about $115 per student per semester. With over 100 students each year taking this class, it adds up to over $13,000 a year in costs. Particularly for a non-majors course, this seemed way too high. Now, the number of open education resources, or OERs, has grown tremendously in recent years. And since I was majorly revamping this course anyway, it seemed like a perfect time to investigate OER options for the class. I also wanted to make this textbook interactive with a lot of real life, life applications to engage students with chemistry. Now, it's no secret that chemistry scares a lot of people. I wanted to make this course accessible and interesting for the students. So I set out to assemble a textbook that was an interactive OER. For me, this means that there is no cost to the students. It also means that I should be able to personalize the content for my students and for the class, and also incorporate relevant videos and interactive websites to help engage students as they navigate it, and also embed questions for students to answer to check their comprehension as they're learning and moving through the text. The platform that I used was LibreText for this OER. This platform is supported by the Department of Education Open Textbook Pilot Project and the California Education Learning Lab. Two big reasons I chose LibreText is because most of the OERs I was planning on pulling content from were already found in this platform, which helps make remixing really easy. And another reason was that they have the ADAPT homework system. This integrates directly with my learning management system and allows me to track student progress and assign grades for their work as they engage with the text. Now to create this OER, I had four major steps. The first was to remix sections from several existing OERs. Within the LibreText system, I was able to select and reorder the sections that I wanted to use really easily, even though I was pulling from five or six different textbooks. Once the texts were compiled into one spot, I was able to edit and refine the content so it matched my learning objectives and the focus that I wanted to have in the class. I also incorporated some location relevant information specific to our geographic location. One of the units that we're investigating in this class is on water quality and we're located right on Lake Erie. So I was able to use some of my own images such as the one shown here on Lake Erie to help strengthen personal connections for students and with the content. And then the other layer of this project was those ADAPT activities. So embedding questions to help students check their comprehension as they navigated the textbook. Now this project I started in the fall of 2023. At the time, I just gave students links to the various textbooks that I was pulling from. And then I created these written reflections for students to answer as they were going through the textbook. At the end of the semester, I administered a student survey. And then in the spring, I really polished the text. So I remixed it, personalized the textbook, fixed all of the, the, the text so it represented what I wanted it to. And then I also embedded the ADAPT activities. At the end of the spring semester, I administered that student survey again. So the textbook had five different units. The first looked at the properties and measurements of matter. We then looked at naming and structure of compounds. So looking at atomic structure and then different types of bonding. We then looked at gases and climate change. And this is where we really had an environmental focus, looking at air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. We then moved on to a unit on the chemistry of water, looking at the water cycle, acid rain, and then also how our drinking water comes from Lake Erie to our tap here at Cleveland State University. And the last unit that we covered was nuclear chemistry. So looking at how radiation was discovered, the different types of radiation and their properties, and then looked at applications and students got to choose one of the aspects they were most interested in. So either medicine, nuclear bombs, any of the nuclear disasters, et cetera. Now the student survey that I administered in both fall and spring semester, I had 57 students respond out of a total of 103 possible. 
All of this work was covered under IRB approval. So one of the first questions was, do you typically purchase the course materials that are required? And about 60% of students will purchase the materials all or most of the time, whereas 9% say that they would never purchase the required materials. I also asked how important it was that the textbook for the class was free. And 82% of students reported that it was very important to them that the textbook costs were free. I then asked how often they use the text. Now, before I show the data, I will say that students had required reading assignments before each class so that they would have an understanding of some of the big ideas before we discuss them and use them in class each day. So what we found, according to student responses, was about 70% of students said that they used the text several times a week or more. 7% never used the text, uh, about 11% used it once a week. Now I will say even though they had required assignments before each class, so three times a week, they could batch them and do all three in one sitting rather than engaging with it multiple times if they chose. Now I'll say it's really exciting, LibreText announced that they're going to be releasing the analytics for the textbooks in the near future. So it'll be really interesting to tie those in the analytics from the platform compared to my survey results. I also asked students to describe their thoughts on the e-text. So I gave them several statements and asked whether or not they agreed, strongly agreed, disagreed, or strongly disagreed. For each of the statements, students, about 80% of the respondents agreed or strongly agreed with each of the statements that were listed here. The statements with the highest agreement rate were that the e-text held their, or that it was, they enjoyed using it in the text, in the course, that it helped them learn and it helped them to understand. The lowest response was that the e-text held their attention. I also asked them to reflect on how this text compared to other texts that they use. And once again, students responded very favorably. Over 80% agreed or strongly agreed with each of the statements. Highest scores were on that they wished more of their classes used textbooks like this one, that they preferred no cost to a paid textbook, and that I should use this text again next semester. I also gave them an open response question so students could share what they liked about the e-text. So here's just a few of the responses that I received. Students said it was easy to navigate, that the e-text was very helpful, that it was efficient and easy to navigate, easy to understand. They liked that they could access it wherever they were, that it was concise, easy to understand, and they liked that it was available anytime and that it was short and to the point. Now, one of the other major components of this project was creating the comprehension checks, so these embedded activities within the text. Now, the ADAPT system associated with LibreText is really easy and versatile to use. They have their own question formats embedded within the system. You can also use other platforms and H5P activities as well. So here's just a snapshot of some of the activities that I embedded. So I have traditional multiple choice questions. What I really liked about the ADAPT system is that I had full control. So here with chemistry, we use a lot of formulas and advanced formatting. So superscripts, subscripts, um, all of this and fractions. And I had full control. So this is one of the multiple choice questions that I use some of the more advanced formatting features. One of the question types that I tended to default to were these drop downs. So I could give students a statement and then choose and enter in several options for them to choose from. So here they're ranking different radiation based on their ionization power. So in the select an option box, they would be given either alpha, beta, or gamma radiation and would have to match each one to the statement. I also created some um, tables where students would then just manually enter in numbers. Here they're analyzing the subatomic particles of different ions and then would, would enter in the properties for each protons, neutrons, and electrons. There's also some more traditional calculation types of questions. So here students would actually undergo the calculation and then enter in their numerical response. And sometimes I would incorporate H5P activities. So here is a Creative Commons licensed image that I then put in boxes so students would have to drag and drop the text onto the image to, to help learn the layers of the atmosphere. So the ADAPT activities were only available in the spring. So the survey respondents here are slightly lower. So we have 36 out of 59 possible student responders. 
And for each of these statements, again, students rank them either strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. For the ADAPT activities, each of the statements, students rank them, 90% of the student respondents agreed or strongly agreed with each of those statements. So they took them very favorably, that they should be used again next semester, they wish more of their textbooks had these ADAPT activities, that they helped them learn and helped them read the text. Here's some student feedback specifically about those ADAPT activities. They liked that it went along with the e-text to help them check their understanding. They liked that it was helpful because it could focus on the important aspects of the text and they were good practice for the math portions. They liked how it had short, low stakes comprehension questions to help them learn and remember the material. And they were questions weren't so hard that they were overly stressed about getting it right or wrong or looking up the answers because they were scared to get it wrong. And they liked that it was engaging and offered activities to help them understand the coursework. So in conclusion, overall, it was really easy to remix and edit the content that already existed in the LibreText platform. I was really happy also with the variety of question formats that I had to choose from when creating the ADAPT questions embedded within the text. Overall, students were very excited and happy that the cost of the textbook was free. And they provided really positive feedback on both the e-text as well as the embedded ADAPT activities. I did have a few students request a glossary of the vocabulary terms like a traditional textbook. So I do plan to do that next. I also plan to create a set of flashcards for these vocabulary terms for each of the chapters to help students really get the vocabulary down. Here's a QR code for you to access the e-text so you can see what I compiled. Unfortunately, the ADAPT activities are a little bit more complicated to share, but I'm happy to add you in. So if you would like to see them, please send me an email at e.avram at csuohio.edu, and I'm happy to add you into a course. Just an interesting side bit. One of the questions on the survey, I asked students, would you rather have an engaging textbook or a really engaging professor? And, uh, they responded 82% would prefer an engaging professor over an engaging text, which was a little surprising considering how much time and effort I'd spent on developing this textbook. So it's important to not forget how important it is that face-to-face -face and in-person contact that we have with students. As we're wrapping up, I wanna thank the Michael Schwartz Library's Textbook Affordability Grant for supporting this work, as well as the amazing library and instructional staff at Cleveland State University. In particular, my team, Mandy Goodset, Teresa Nawalniak, Heather Capret, and Barb Loomis. I also want to thank the LibreText support team. They always answered all my questions really quickly and thoroughly. They also have these fabulous open office hours where you can just drop in and get assistance right on Zoom. So thank you so much for your time, and please reach out with all of your questions.